Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing fantastic. And today we are visiting a local Bass Pro Shop. This is kind of like a Field and Stream store that I've also done a video on. And these stores are very, very large. And over the door here, it's really cool because it says, Welcome Fishermen, Hunters, and Other Liars. Indeed. Like I said, these are very big stores. They are two level, as you can see here. And you walk in, you're greeted by this very, very large atrium. It has a fireplace and... They have a, a couple of four-wheelers set out on display that you can uh, look at. And they are from Tracker, which is a company that is uh, owned by the group that owns these stores. But yeah, once you go in through the little walkway here, you are greeted with a bunch of your usual novelty little things. They have fishing gear there to the left. That whole center is just for fishing. And they have clothes on the other side. And as you walk down straight through the middle of the store, <clears throat> this is in the very back of the store, this is a very large fish tank, and it's a really cool thing to see. Uh, I know my daughter really likes coming here and, and looking at it. As you can tell, she kind of pulls me <laughs> all the way <laughs> to the back here first. And they just have a lot of fish in here that you can you can just look at. And it's actually a very, very pretty setup because it's kind of like a diorama almost. They have a bunch of stuffed animals, which I'll show you here in just a minute. But it's just a really, really cool thing to come, you know, to see in the middle of a uh, shopping store. You can see one of the stuffed animals there. And some more deer and stuff over there. And let's see, over here on the wall, they have this little poster here for Alabama Conservation and Natural Resources. This is all of the bass, the perch, catfish, trout, all of the pike, all the kind of fish. So you can kind of look at that and get an idea of what the fish are if you're not so uh, educated. And then off to the left side of that, they have a couple pontoon boats, usually of course, you know, it is more stock than this, but they did have a couple regular boats. One thing you cannot do is stick a boat out with a ramp with stairs going up it because there she goes. The little one is going to go right for it every time. And she, of course, wants to run in there and look around and sit in the captain's chair and play with the steering wheel and lift up all the cushions and, and everything. So she has a really good time, so it is perfectly okay by me. And I will say it is nice to look at all these boats and... And uh, generally, like I said, the, the, shores, the store is usually a lot more stocked than this. And then, of course, she goes back and she finds all of these huge plushies of all of these fish. And she really liked the porpoise. So she had to keep pointing out the porpoise to me. And, of course, the Nemo. Had to, you know, can't leave that one out. And when you go upstairs, you can look at the top of this particular fish tank... And this is just, you know, you can see down there, that's the view of the people that just walk up. That's what they would see. And you're kind of now level with the water. And this is like the first couple steps up. And you keep going. You can stop at this little viewing window here. And you can actually, she, she really liked the, uh, the long fish there. And yeah, it just, it wraps around. So you actually walk around the back of it and... They have all kinds of, of stuff for you to look at while you're making your way around there, which I will show you. And for whatever reason, they had this blocked off. You know, they, they of course, they didn't want people going back over there, which I understand. And here's a stuffed bear, which, you know, depending on how you feel, be cool, sad, indifferent. I got some wild pigs. Which is kind of neat. Like I said, all this stuff, especially if you have little ones, you know, you bring them there, you walk through here, you get to look at all this stuff. It, it's it's just, it's, it's really neat. It's a nice hook for a shopping store, you know. And then there's another little place there where they kind of had roped off, but you can kind of peek over there and you can just see more of everything. And then when you go up here, you are physically now on the second level of the store and there is a bridge that goes across. There's some more stuffed animals. It's like some coyotes or something. 
And then when you look across there, you see the bear kind of looking at you. And if you see in the background there, there's an actual mannequin that's climbing. That was actually kind of funny. But moving on over on the second level, they have a bunch of uh, Cabela brand because this is they are owned by the same company. And they have all these uh, zip, uh, all these uh, vacuum seal bags. And one thing I saw were these zippered vacuum bags. And these things are really, really neat. I really like the idea of a zippered vacuum bag. And of course, you can look at the stock too while I'm kind of looking the camera around or uh, pointing the camera around. And she wanted to model for some of the bags. They had a vacuum sealer. That was actually available, five hundred ninety-nine dollars. You know, kind of pricey. So, but it's not bad for a, for a chamber sealer. And then they had that one, three ninety-nine. And all of these units they actually had in stock, which I was actually shocked. So I went down to the more value ones, and they had this one from Cabela's for ninety-nine dollars. And they did call it a heavy duty, which you know I would take that with a grain of salt. They did have a bunch of meat slicers, all kinds of stuff. And like I said, you know, you can get an idea. They had a lot of of product. You know, it's not like, you know, most of these stores have been in the past where, you know, they don't have, you know, a lot of the units on display. And the store also has a little indoor virtual shooting range. Kids really like it. And you can see here on these aisles the stuff to make uh, dehydrated, uh, to make jerky and all that kind of stuff, completely fully stocked. They had everything that you would need to make stuff so yeah definitely not lacking which was you know really good to see so I kind of very quickly looked at a bunch of the camping supplies and as you can see here you know there's not a lot of empty shelves the shelves are all pretty pretty much stocked now those were the camping stoves there to the uh, left and here to the right now I will say this the camping food at this particular store, what I was shocked at how low stock it was. Because usually this store always has a lot of camping food. And they had the Mountain House Pro Packs and then the regular standard packs. They had a decent selection of Alpine Air, depending on you know how you feel about that particular brand. They did have a lot of different menus available and you know they had probably eight to ten of each. And your typical wise buckets of blandness. And then they had these peanut butter bites, which I had never really seen before. Those right there in the middle. And they had a cocoa and an apple cinnamon and then just a straight up peanut butter bite. And that was that was very interesting to see. And then I moved upstairs to the ammo and looked at all the blazer brass twenty two and then nine millimeter two two three. And you can kind of just see some of the prices. And what the one thing I didn't like was the ammo was literally all over the place. Like there was no organization to the calibers. It was, you could find, like I was looking at 308 and it was just, it was everywhere. Like it was on the top shelf, it was on the bottom shelf, it was on the right, in the middle, it was left in the middle. You know, it was just, it was everywhere. But they did have a lot of ammo. They didn't ha have any Subcon 300 Blackout, but they did have... Some like 150 and one, I think 160 grain, 300 blackout. And you can see there are plenty of 9 millimeter and all different, uh, and all different brands. 45, uh, 45 auto, uh, 40 Smith and Wesson. You know, they 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 literally had anything anything that you would have wanted. You could have you could have found. They had plenty of 7.62. Uh, you know, plenty of AK ammo. You know, plenty of regular 308. They even had some uh, 270 uh, ammo there, which you know I haven't really been looking for, but it was still you know it was nice to see it. And then of course a family walked up, and I didn't want to look like a retard sitting there filming. But they had a lot. That whole other side was nothing but shotgun ammo, so they had plenty of shotgun ammo. And then I moved over to the reloading supplies and looked at the dies. Plenty, plenty of stuff. You know they weren't lacking for anything. Plenty of projectiles. Uh, they had a very, very small amount of Sierra stuff, which, and of course, the baby, for whatever reason, she really liked that box, so she had to show me. And they had a little bit of brass, and then on the other side, they had some, they actually had powder and stuff, so, you know, yeah. But I, but one of the things that I did want you guys to comment on, 
I know I've got a lot of hunters and, and outdoorsy people that watch this channel, and I was thinking about getting into crossbows, but I have zero experience and zero idea of what I'm looking at. So I just ran over here and I started looking at some of these crossbows and some of the prices, and I was genuinely curious. Uh, any of you guys know anything about crossbows? You know, I don't want to waste money on something cheap just for the sake of having it. You know, if I buy a crossbow, I want to buy it to use it. You know, I don't want the top of the line, but I don't want something that is not going to be, you know, junk that I would need to upgrade, you know, down the road. I'd like to start out with something really good. So I just kind of ran around and looked at, looked at all these and uh, this is what's available to me at this particular store. So I, I, like I said, I don't know if any of these are good or you know, don't waste your time kind of thing, but, uh, but yeah, I figure you guys in the comment section could let me know. I'd really greatly appreciate your input, and yeah, this was my trip with my little one to Bass Pro Shop, and, uh, I will throw up a subscription button in a next video, and I really appreciate you guys for, if you made it this far, for hanging out with me and listening to me and actually watching our little store tour, and yeah, uh, we'll see you, uh, in the next one. Peace.